Welcome to another video guys. In this one we are going to talk about PhD programs. If you are an applicant who's looking or who is interested in applying to PhD programs in the US or in Canada, this video is for you. Now you might know that PhD programs are extremely limited in their intake and the reason is because there's a lot of factors that go in. For instance, you might know that PhD programs are very well funded and that funding has to come from somewhere, right? So of course that's limited, not every applicant can get in because the funding that the university has is extremely limited and they have to balance it out in professors wants as well as basically the students okay so it has to be balanced or maybe the pro professor wants to have a startup or a team of its own his own right so these things come into the picture as well these are the scenarios which you might have never even thought of so there's a lot of other things that go into the phd application but if you do follow this particular technique that I'm going to tell you, there are basically these factors that I'm going to tell you, you, you take care of them, you will see that you will have a very good return on your investment that you put in, basically your applications that you put in, you will have a lot of admissions, okay? So in case that's something that interests you, let's talk further about that in the, in the video. Okay, the first thing that we want to discuss over here is that PhD programs are extremely research oriented. Now this might be different for some programs which are very, very industry based, but still, even if they're industry based programs, PhD programs are generally very research oriented. So one thing that you, keep in you have to keep in mind is that your research levels should be good, but that's not the only thing. When, when you're applying to schools towards the US or Canada, they're looking at a whole holistic profile. They want a well-rounded individual who can perform just as well as he does in the classroom. And basically he should be able to do that, reproduce that or something of that sort outside the classroom as well. Okay. So right into right into it basically we're, we're not going to waste any time i'm going to tell you all of those factors that influence your decision and these are by no means these are 100 percent you know all the factors that you will find because depending on the program they might change but these are some of the most important ones that you should look out for okay the first thing is research experience okay of course you saw it coming all right i know that research experience has to be one of the top factors and this is reflected in all of the applicants that we have worked with over here at wyambrad the first thing is that your publications they matter if you have some publications if you have publications in a journal which has a high impact factor that will be a very good point for you trust me that will take you further than any of these points out here okay conferences if you have maybe presented your paper in some conferences maybe you have presented them in international conferences maybe you've gone overseas to different countries to present them PyCons, all of these things these count a lot if you have something like that under your belt trust me you are in for a ride okay the next things awards and honors all of these things also count of course okay one of the most important factors that a lot of people do not pay so much attention to is your statement of purpose now statement of purpose is very different it, it can be drastically different from what you would expect from a master's or a bachelor's applicant they're completely different the phd statement of purpose is basically let me just summarize that in a few words okay it's all about your research interests you need to have your research interests and you need to corroborate those with the research that you have done in the past so if you've done some research in the past that corroborates your research interest that shows that yes these are the sort of research interests that should evolve with the research that he's been doing in the past that's a good scenario okay and finally one more thing over here your sop should be very well centered around the professor that you're interested in see a lot of times you will see that it's really not about choosing the right university it's about choosing the right program and choosing the right program can only happen if you read enough research okay and if you know which professor you're interested in working with it's really about choosing this professor that you are interested in working with if you can do that very well and the professor can relate to whatever you have been doing in the past these two relate that's the biggest advantage you can have okay so again these are some of the most important things you should cover in the statement of purpose if you want i can make a very detailed video on that just for phd applicants okay the next point you saw it coming it's the professor of interest so first off why did you pick this professor okay every university that you apply to you should have one professor that you are interested in working with okay it should not be you know generally some 
you know, I, I also don't recommend choosing two or three professors. A lot of students do that. They think that by writing a longer statement of purpose and giving alternatives, they're increasing their chances. But what you're essentially telling the university is that you can pick out one or two professors from literally any university that they put out in front of you. So really think carefully about the professors, really read their research, go deep into it and talk about their research in your statement of purpose if you can. That will definitely help you in your applications. Okay. So it's really about finding the right professor, right fit for you. Okay. Don't, I repeat, do not go for professors who have been very, very popular just because, you know, they're popular. Maybe you're interested in the research. That's good then. But if you're going for a professor who is just because he's very, very popular or he might have a lot of funding, that's generally not a very good idea. And the universities can see through that, unfortunately. Other things, whenever you're taking the research of a professor, make sure to check out his latest research. A lot of people check out the research of a professor, but they'll go back in time and they'll go back five, six years. And that research is already obsolete. He's working on something else now. That happens with a lot of professors, with a lot of applicants. They pick out the research that's not really, you know, the latest or current research that the professor is pursuing. You want to make sure that that does not happen with you. This video you're watching, I want to make sure that that does not happen with you. Okay. Again, just a brief reminder over here, guys, if this is helping you out, if these points are helping you out, because I do put a lot of research into it and I've worked with a lot of people and all of this just does not come out of thin air. It's all my experience of working with people. So give me a subscribe and like this video. It'll really help me out. Continuing with the video, I will go on to the next point, which is the letter of recommendation. The letter of recommendation is one of the most important parts of a PhD application. Okay, It might not be as important in bachelor's, Definitely, you know, not important in bachelor's, not very important, but in master's, it's a little bit more important, but in PhD, it's a whole new level of importance that you have to give to the LOR. So your LOR should be strong. If your professors are asking you to write them, make sure that they are strong. You have an opportunity here. If they're not asking you to write them and they're writing them yourself, make sure that you talk about how, you know, what are the kind of things that the professor will be writing and maybe give him a brief sheet of points that you would like him to mention. So these are the sort of things you can do to make your LOR much better. Again, if you want, I can create a whole new separate video on this topic, which will definitely give you more pointers on how you can make a strong LOR for yourself. One more thing over here is that the LORs should be taken from recommenders with whom you have at least one or two years of experience. And this experience should be research experience. At least one or two years of research experience you should have had with them. And all of your LORs should be academic in these cases, unless you have researched in the industry, which is a typically different scenario. Okay. Of course, and this LOR should very, very genuinely be coherent with your SOP and your professor of interest. So whatever you're writing in your SOP, whatever your professor of interest is doing right now, his research interests, these should be very coherent with the LOR. Like all, all these are very, very connected and you need to make sure that that's true in your case. A few more pointers here that should not be overlooked is that for research based programs and essentially PhD programs, you want a GPA that is pretty good. Okay. You want a GPA, which is at least 3.5 out of four, or if you're looking at it from the Indian system, it should be at least eight out of 10. It's important to have this level because then it just puts you ahead of a lot of applicants out there. Trust me, I've seen this GPA plays a huge role and they want people who can, because you're going to be studying for four to six years and they want to make sure that this applicant can basically sustain and he can basically cope up with the programs that the university is presenting you with. Because trust me, PhD programs are no joke and you need to be able to show that you have the ability to really, you know, score well. Okay. Again, your undergraduate or master's institution where you did all of that from will also matter in this scenario. Okay. One more thing over here, your GRE, GMAT, and if you're an international applicant, your TOEFL and IELTS scores will also count. Again, these are thresholds. If you do not have a very good score, you might want to explain that on your SOP. If you do not have a very good GPA, then that can be basically offset by showing a very good research experience. So all of these things should be taken care of. And finally, a few more things over here, your personal statement. Personal statement is different from the statement of purpose. It's about you and the statement of purpose is really about the research that you would like to do and why you're picking this program that you're applying to. Okay. Um, one final thing that will also help is if you have any sort of teaching experience in the past. And that is a huge asset to any university in the US or Canada, because 
they usually look for applicants who are looking to study there first and then maybe you know convert into a professor later on so if that's something that sounds like you know basically you would want to do maybe you should go ahead and get some teaching experience but if you already have it that's already great so these are some of the points that you should definitely take care of if you're applying to a phd program in the us now i know i did not go into the depth of these points there's a lot more that i can talk about basically i can go over each of these points i can make a video on that but what i want you to do is i want you to comment down below which point you think is the most important and what i'll do is i'll make a video on that and this will happen relatively in this week itself okay within the next seven days if you comment down below tell me which point you want a video on particularly i'll go ahead and do that specifically for you guys specifically for phd applicants okay again apart from that i think that this has been a very you know board's eye view and there's a lot more to talk about and i'll sure i'll be sure to do that in, in my next videos in case you are interested in checking out some of the PhD applicants and their admissions and their statistics, their profiles, you know, which universities they got into, which, uh, what kind of scores and profiles they have, what you can do is you can go on to this page, it's called whyimgrad.com, click on the decisions tab and you can check out all of the admins over here, okay, admins, rejects, applied, everything, you can check it out, okay, I hope this helps. You can also sign up on the website, which will give you access to a whole lot of interesting material regarding the universities and basically the data, such as what are the kind of applicants, the average scores of the applicants you get in. So I hope that helps you out. Um, again, I'll see you in the next one. If you have any questions, doubts, just post them down below or you know connect with me on my Instagram. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.